Hey everybody, uh, this is uh, Dr. Julie Quinn here. I'm going to go over writing assignment number five, the white paper to an external audience. We've dabbled in some discussions about the white paper this uh, term, but uh, I thought an independent video just going over it, especially because of its value, would be really important um, and hopefully help you contextualize the assignment as you work um, this week in building your drafts. Okay, um, in this paper, you will write a document that provides information that an external audience can use to inform a decision. If you recall back, if you reflect back on writing assignment number four, you wrote to an internal audience member. You wrote to Smith, who was the, 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 the owner of Force Lawn Services. And now you're talking about an idea or a concept where you're writing toward people who do not work at your organization. Okay. And, uh, there are different types of white papers you can see in the CanWrite document in uh, Professor Kavanaugh's video and in some of our other discussions, especially in some of the ideas that you've been sharing in prior discussions, right? White papers can, can follow these types and also sort of blend them together. They can be technical papers. They can be business benefit, like you're making a particular business recommendation. Um, they can be an advocacy paper, um, and they can be a hybrid of some of, some of these different styles. Uh, I know that um, I see a lot of IT papers, uh, and recommendations for, you know, uh, cyber, cloud cybersecurity. And I am, I'm seeing some social, um, paper discussions as well. There's a lot of interesting variety during this class and that's great. Okay. Note that, um, the length of this assignment is slightly longer than the report. Remember the, the report to a supervisor was 12 to 1500. This is 13 to 1600. Three graphics this time, one of which must be original. Now, original does not mean highly complicated. You could have a basic table and that counts as a graphic. Um, brainstorm with me, reach out. Like uh, everybody should be drafting and then getting feedback on their drafts. I recommend we do that through uh, conferences that we can schedule based on everyone's availability. Uh, and we can, especially if you have an outline and you've got some research and notes, we can brainstorm what data have you collected and what's the best way to convey that data. For example, um, using a pie chart is not always recommended because pie chart indicates parts of a whole. Well, a lot of it depends on what argument you're making. That may not always exactly fit. So we look at the data you've got and we're like, well, would a flow chart work here? Would a bar graph work here? And then I can show you some tools, some easy tools that are built into Word, for example, to build the basic chart. It does not have to be fancy, but it should be functional. Okay. Format, you're going to be citing your content in APA style. You will have five sources. One needs to be through one search and let me amend this note. It needs to be a peer reviewed academic journal article. I want you to get comfortable, especially at the 300 level with conveying data from peer reviewed scholarly content. Okay. So you've got the white paper, an introduction to the genre and its expectations from peer to OWL that um, you can see that you'll be writing to an external audience of a particular industry or field of study. Um, you could also approach this by creating a white paper promoting a particular product. You won't be doing a super hard sell, but it's but information about the product and through sort of the expository style of your writing you could actually make a subtle argument that way. It's not, this is not marketing content. Um, per se, but uh, you can see how white paper could be included in a larger collection of marketing materials. Uh, there's a little just reminder note that this is not an internal document. So here's some strategies. Have a focus topic. Go back to the prior discussions where everybody was brainstorming if you're stuck. And then if that doesn't help you out of that, uh, reach out and let's chat. Sometimes a, a conversation for five or six minutes can, can get you a really great uh, idea for your white paper. Here are some um, examples of when you can write to a reasonably focused audience. Um, you know, your white paper can be broad, but it focuses on a particular problem that an audience may be experiencing. You can write a white paper, the document says, on better ways of training employees to detect phishing scams. This would be a great white paper to small and medium sized um, uh, companies not to obviously fortune 500 corporations, which already have these processes and procedures in place. Uh, here's a great idea. You could write a white paper on better ways of teaching grammar online to high school students. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that topic unless you're going on to become an English teacher, but you kind of get a sense of the range, um, of, of white papers, uh, of the, of the topics. 
integrate thorough research, which means in most sections of the paper, right? Um, and try not to, you know, force your hand. Don't, don't get to Aristotle called this sort of pathos, this sort of emotional argument. Don't get emotional in this document. You're running toward an external audience. You want to come across as objective. So third person point of view really is the best way to, to do this. Okay. Here are the sections of your white paper. Executive summary, which should be on its own page. Um, there are, uh, you could search, uh, and actually, as a matter of fact, I'll just put it at the bottom of this video. Um, there's a great link to, um, uh, our college's discussion of white papers and how they're organized, um, uh, inc with the, including the executive summary and how the executive summary is organized. It should be a miniature of the document. Okay. Um, then your document itself, st put that, start the introduction on a new page, right? Um, introduction. Previous approaches to the issue or the concern, new findings, conclusion, and references. Those are the sections that I will be looking for. And you can see me go over that uh, in the discussions uh, when I talk about some of the sample student paper. So executive summary, you summarize your research and your purpose. It's a standalone document. If a reader, for most of the time, um, C-suite executives tend to just read the executive summary. Um, and, uh, they don't always read the entire document. So you will share some basic data in that executive summary. You will have an introduction, previous approaches, new findings, headers. If you, if you do this well, um, it's like a quick glance. It's like an at a glance document. Then you have the introduction, provide some background information for readers. Not all, like if you're writing about new cybersecurity processes for small, brand new mom and pop businesses. Your readers aren't going to have a lot of background in IT that you do. So, of course, you want to set up the groundwork, um, orient your readers to the topic, um, defining important terms as you go. In the previous approaches section, um, maybe you go back, uh, especially if you're doing like IT topics, you go back maybe five or so years and talk about what was really common at that time, uh, or maybe, maybe as much as 10 years, but I wouldn't go back more than that. Um, to talk about how the evolution of cybersecurity in these small businesses, just as one example, um, the, how it was set up before. And uh, so that's a previous approaches. This is what used to be done. Then you have a new section about now this is what can be done now. And that's significantly different in some sense from the prior approaches to business cybersecurity, especially for a small company who may have a limited budget. Then you've got a conclusion section, and then of course your references, which should be set up in APA style. I want to make one important note. Your references should match the sources named in the essay, right? If you mentioned Smith and Gomez in the references, I want to see a Smith and Gomez um, reference. And so you want to make sure everybody that's in the references is named in the body, and everyone in the body has a corresponding reference. Okay, and remember those five sources. The length requirements are listed here as well. Um, and note that I determine length by the first word and I'll count your executive summary. That's fine. But from the beginning of the executive summary to the end of the conclusion, a lot of people, students will use extra research and try to do less writing. And remember when we're talking about the writing of the report, it's from the beginning of the report to the end of the conclusion, not the end of the, um, references. So just sort of keep that in mind. Graphics. You want to incorporate three graphics. You can borrow graphics, but go back and look at my feedback on the prior assignments. If I asked you to edit the images, if I asked you to zoom into the images, clean, crisp images are important. And, you know, um, you can orient the, this report. It's not set up like an academic um, traditional APA essay with the double spacing. You can play with your format. You can think about those park principles and document design. I actually think that that's really helpful. Um, and that makes your document interesting and it moves you away from the sort of scholarly and you kind of get a sense of this really truly is a hybrid technical document. It's got scholarly elements, but you're using, um, you're, you're creating a document in multiple sections. I had to do that a lot as a technical writer. You are incorporating data and you're conveying data in both prose and in graphic form. Um, you know, you're thinking about uh, the proximity, the alignment, the contrast, I, I, repetition. Try not to make your font too big and try not to make your font too small. My recommendation for design of this document is, uh, and no, uh, maybe between 11 and 12, um, uh, like your, your point size. 
and use an easily readable font. You don't have to choose um, Times New Roman, but Courier's get sort of the kerning's a little bit weird, which just means sort of space between letters. And um, uh, some fonts are just uh, overly some. Uh, I would never use Comic Sans. Let's just put it that way. So choose fonts that are consistent so in each section of the text it's the same font of course you can have a contrasting header font which is kind of nice um, but but play around with the document have fun with it but don't overthink the design simple and direct is always better than super fancy um, and don't spend too much time on the design and not enough time on the writing when you look at the breakdown of the uh, point values for the assignment um, that's the the way you kind of know that you've included everything you need to so i'm going to show that to you in a minute you will write a first draft. I will comment on that first draft if you set up a conference with me. So we need to be doing that within the next sort of week or so. And then uh, you will submit your final draft for final grading. Note those conferences, you can get so much more help that way. If, if you are deployed right now um, and you cannot set that up, email me and we'll, we'll figure out another way forward. Okay. Uh, maybe I can look at your file and give you some audio feedback. I would certainly be more than willing to do that. Let's take a quick peek. And let's now go into, um, where am I going here? I want to go into the assignment. I should be at Vita's Learner, and I want to show you the um, rubric. Okay, length. This is sort of the easiest way to get the most amount of points, but here the reality is, is that if you just write fluff, like I, I've seen students say, write sentences like this, due to the fact that because of global warming, it's sort of saying, yeah, because of global warming. So you want to be really sort of um, effective and efficient with your word choice. But the 12 to 1600 is a range. Don't go too far above it either. That shows sort of a lack of control. So you want to sort of be in that sweet spot. I don't want to see anything above like 1800 words of introduction and conclusion. Okay. Um, if you go below that, that just means you may not be providing enough detail to be convincing. That's why the length requirement is there. Do I know who this is being written for? Do you have a clear problem? And the writing provides background, so audience and purpose. That's 24 points. That's actually quite a bit. Your executive summary, by the way, is only three. So uh, not, you know, wildly significant as far as the point value toward the overall assignment, but it's giving you good practice in, 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 in testing out your skills and doing that sort of um, condensed quick summary of the entirety of your document. Even though you'll be expected to write some practice, I'm just going to grade those discussions as the attempt to practice the idea, but my recommendation is you don't really write your complete executive summary till your first draft is done. How do you summarize something you haven't written yet? So my, my recommendation would be write the white paper draft and then write the executive summary. It's just for efficiency's sake. Two points for your introduction, 10 points for your previous approaches section, and 12 for your new findings, right? We're talking about presenting specific data. We're talking about describing uh, approaches and strategies related to the data. You know, conclusion is 2%. The use of your sources is 7%. Are your sources listed listed like in the references and cited in the body paragraphs in APA format? That's one part of the equation. The other part is, um, are they scholarly, primary, or appropriate for the message? Let's try to get one from the databases, and then I'll be really flexible. And if, with the rest, as long as it's appropriate to your topic. If you don't know for sure, email me your list and your topic, and um, I can give you a quick email response on that. You've got points for the number of graphics, points for the originality of the graphics, and there's a lot of weight this time around on the quality and the message of the graphics. So don't forget this aspect of the assignment. Okay. And then 15% for grammar and punctuation. You can work with me in conference. You can work with the effective writing center tutors. You can run the grammar and spell checker. Well, it doesn't catch everything. It will catch a lot, maybe 40 to 50% of the issues I tend to see. I catch because when I open up student files, my grammar checker is on. And then the other things that, you know, I catch because I'm an English professor. But anyhow, if you could catch the 40 to 50% of it, your paper's not going to be that busy with feedback from me about um, uh, comma splices or random capitalization. So anyways, that's the overview for this assignment. Uh, I hope this has been helpful for you, and I look forward to seeing your white paper drafts over the next week or so.